Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking all about dental health and I'm going to give you some secrets to, sorry about that, so I'm going to give you some secrets to achieve cavity free teeth. So I went to the dentist recently, she was shocked at how good my teeth were, I was very very proud, very big grin on my face and I want to tell you everything I've learned about uh, dental health so you can avoid getting cavities, so you can have really awesome teeth because I think going to the dentist is quite a scary thing for, for many, but for me, for me personally myself it definitely was. So I'm just going to give you everything that, that I think you need to know so you can have really awesome cavity free teeth. So this is a live video so if you have any questions please just uh, leave your leave your comments and I'll, I'll answer your questions towards the end of the video. Same goes for if you're watching this as a video afterwards. So I've split the board into two different sections here. We've got 20%, so this is like the less important side of things, and the 80%, which is the more important side of things. And you're going to notice that this 20% side is all of the things that you get told are important about dental health, and this 80% side is stuff you probably nobody's probably really told you very much about this. So we're going to be talking more about the nutrition of of having good teeth. And a lot of the stuff that I'm saying here, so I'm just like some guy on the internet, right? Why should you trust me? Most of this is is not just my opinion. This is you can go and check out Dr. Weston A. Price. He is a so he's got many books. He was a dentist who unfortunately lost his son to a dental infection, to dental health problems, and he said it as his mission to figure out why um, why teeth problems were so so common in the Western world. So a lot of what I'm saying here isn't just like my opinion. You can go and look up this work. Like it's scientifically referenced stuff. There's the Western A. Price Foundation. Like they're like. It's like science, you know, it's not just me saying it, this is, this is science. I'm going to deliver it to you in a maybe slightly less scientific way so that you can digest it very well, but just know that the claims I'm making here when we're talking about this, they're not just my opinion, this is science. So up here in the, in the 20%, I'm going to say these, these two things I've, I found really important. So if you don't know what an aqua pick is, is this basically like, imagine like the, the kind of toothpick that they use at the dentist. So you've got this like machine that you can fill up with with water and you, you have this in your own bathroom so you can do this at home. I got one of these, it was like 40 euros, that's like, it's like less than $50. It's one of the best things I've ever bought, one of the best ways I've ever spent my money. You basically fill it up with some water and you can use it to, it shoots a little jet of water out and it really helps you clean the in between your teeth and like where your gums connect to your teeth. And that was really important, like that's why you're brushing your teeth for the most part, is to get food out from between them and to make sure you don't have anything stuck in between the, in between the gum and the tooth. And this aqua pick, it's amazing. It it does like to be honest, like you don't even really need to brush your teeth if you do if you use aqua pick. It's it's so much better. Yes, you will still get like a biofilm on your teeth that builds up, and you'll have to brush that off. But you can you can do that. I'm going to tell you a bit more about my dental health um, routine towards the end. So definitely check out the aqua pick if you've never heard of one, or if you're thinking about buying one and you just haven't, just buy it. You know, once you have it, you have it. You know, it, you, you've got it, and you can use it every day. And it's amazing, it's life changing, it's so cool, just get one. And if you are going to work with a dentist, so if you do have cavities already, if you do have dental health problems, make sure you work with a bio or an integrative dentist. Make sure you're working with somebody that understands that the teeth are not their own thing that's happening here, that the teeth are connected to the rest of the body and you, don't, you want to make sure your dentist isn't going to be putting things in your mouth that are toxic and potentially cause autoimmune problems and different types of chronic health issues. So you definitely don't want to be putting like amalgams and plastics and stuff like that in your teeth. Not really a good idea because you're going to be exposing yourself to those on a chronic basis because obviously you're carrying this, these toxins in your teeth around with you wherever you go. So make sure that you're working with a good dentist. So a bio-integrative dentist. If you're getting uh, mercury fillings removed, you want to work with a smart dentist. Just make sure you do some research on this and don't just go to like a standard dentist. Probably not, probably not the best option. So this is just the, the things that like people already tell you, you know, brush and floss your teeth, yeah, do that. Use toothpaste, just make sure you don't use fluoride. Eat less sugar and, and make sure you eat less acid. So these, these two, so less sugar and less acid, it, it's kind of like, I feel like this is kind of where people go wrong with parenting. And you're also doing the same kind of mistake with your teeth. You know, you don't want to raise your kids and like protect them from the dangers of the world. And it's like here with your teeth, you don't want to like grow your teeth and you don't want to like protect them from, from the sugar and the acid and stuff in the foods that you're eating. Instead, what you want to do is make them really strong so that they're able to withstand the exposures to sugar and acid. Because sugar and acid are part of like all tasty food, really. I mean, 
So if you're going to be avoiding those things, you're basically just going to be not enjoying the food that you eat. So instead of just avoiding these things, I think it's more important to just make sure your teeth are strong enough that they can, they can handle that. And I find if you do this stuff, a lot of this stuff becomes irrelevant. You know, so I mean, I don't personally use toothpaste. I don't, I don't track my sugar intake, or I'm not careful around acid. Obviously, if you're going to like drink straight lemon juice, don't like rub it all on your teeth. That's that's not going to be helpful. But you generally don't have to worry about this if you're making sure that you're taking care of this 80% portion, which doesn't really get touched on. So let's get started with this. So on the nutrition side of things. I would say, so all of this is important, like all of the things that come into this are really important, but I would say the most important and, and the, the most under-recognized part of this is the fat-soluble vitamins. So this is your vitamin A, and this is, this is a specific type of vitamin A, this is vitamin D3, and this is vitamin K2. So vitamin A, in, when we, what we're talking about here, this vitamin A, this basically only comes from animal foods. So the type of vitamin A that you get from, from plants, so the, the carotenoids, this is actually pre-vitamin A. This is not a bioavailable, utilizable form of vitamin A. Your body has to take this, absorb it at a very poor absorption rate, and then convert it at a very poor conversion rate as well. So if you get 100% of your RDA from carotenoids of vitamin A, after the absorption and conversion, you're basically getting like less than 5% of what your body actually needs. So when I've got vitamin A here, what we're really talking about is retinol. And you're only able to find this in animal foods. And this is a fat soluble vitamin, so you're only able to find this in the fat content of animal foods. So the best sources of things like this would be like egg yolks, uh, butter, think about the things that are from an animal that are high in fat. So egg yolks is a, good, is a really good option, like fatty fish also a really good option. The best thing for, for vitamin A is, is liver, unquestionably, the best thing that you can do for vitamin A is liver. So if you can get some liver in your diet, even like liver twice a week, you're gonna have amazing teeth. Like you're getting vitamin A, you're getting all your B complex vitamins, not so important for teeth, still important for the rest of your health, detoxification, microbiome, everything. Liver is like, like if you've got like superfoods on a shelf here, so you've got like, you've got like blueberries, you've got chlorophyll, you've got uh, goji berries, you've got all of these things that are like superfoods, you've got cacao, you've got the, like this is down here, right? And liver is like, like it's like up here, you know, you can't even see it. It's on another level. So if you can, if you can get liver in your diet in any way, you're just gonna completely blow this out of the park. Liver is, is a great one. Vitamin D, I have another video on vitamin D, so if you wanna check that out, make sure you, I'll, I'll leave a link somewhere where you can just literally, for basically any topic, you can just type the topic followed by my name. So you can just type vitamin D, William Dickinson, in the browser thing at the top, and it will take you to that video. I'll talk more about that, but vitamin D combined with vitamin K2 are really important because they're what tells the, so this works with your teeth and with your bones. So if you've got like osteoporosis, osteopenia, there's a really good likelihood you also probably have cav cavities as well. Because as we were saying, like looking from a, a, in, an integrative space, like they're not disconnected. So your teeth health and your bone health, they're pretty directly connected because your teeth are basically just bones that you have in your mouth. So what's really important here is these two molecules are like hormones that signal your body to move the minerals like the calcium and the magnesium and stuff like that actually into your teeth so that you can have those minerals in your teeth which is what makes them strong. So that's really important. Here we have collagen matrix. So you probably know like cal calcium and magnesium and stuff, they're really important for your teeth and you think that your teeth are really hard because they're made out of calcium. There's actually a very tiny amount of calcium. Most of your teeth are actually made up of this collagen matrix. So this is like the bulk structure of your teeth and your bones as well is actually collagen. And then what happens is so you, your body like builds this collagen tissue structure and then it sort of like sticks calcium to it and that's what makes it really solid. That's what makes bone really hard. That's what makes teeth really hard. But you've also got that collagen in there which is what makes it flexible. So this is why like a strong bone, when you, like, when you hit it, when you fall, it doesn't just snap. If it was just pure calcium, it would just snap. But it isn't, it's calcium like bound to this collagen matrix. And collagen, as you probably know, is like it's in your skin, it's in all of the stretchy areas of your body. The collagen is what gives it this stretch and this elasticity. So this is also really important because it's kind of like, if you've ever made paper mache before and you've like stuck it to a balloon, it's like you've got this, this, this thing that you need to stick it to and that's the collagen matrix. And then you've got the paper mache, the, like the newspaper with glue you stick on top. But if you don't have a strong matrix underneath, you have nothing to stick it to. So you need to make sure that you have a good collagen matrix to, to create this part of this, of this process. 
So again, the best way you can do this is, is with animal products. It's going to be with, with a, like a, a meat stock or a bone broth. So I would, the best option that I would give you would be to just like cook an animal whole. And obviously that's not possible for a cow. What I'm trying to say is you don't want just bone broth. You want bone broth, but you also want some skin. You want some like tendons, joints, and ligaments. You want some of all of the different types of tissues that the animal has. And that's where you're going to get a good, a good mix of different types of amino acids and, and getting this collagen. So the collagen is really present in like the skin, like chicken feet, for example, and necks, like pig's ears, things like that. That's where you're going to get the best uh, collagen sources. So using a meat stock slash bone broth kind of thing is really good for this. And also when you are adding some of the bones, you're also going to be getting these things, which is really important, which is where we're moving now. So on the mineral side of things, as we were just talking about with the collagen matrix, you need calcium and magnesium because these are the things that make the bones strong. They're the things that make the bones become like solid and rigid and, and have that durability to them. So we need these things here, but and this came last for this reason because there's no point having these things if you don't have the signaling molecules telling them to go to the bones. And if the bones don't have a healthy collagen matrix, there's nothing for them to actually attach to. So everyone knows calcium is good for your bones, but it's actually the last part in this process. You have to be doing these other things first before this even makes sense. But then when we come to this, the best sources of this, the calcium magnesium, again, is probably going to be using a bone broth. Because if you're trying to build healthy bones and teeth, you could get the nutrients that are in bones and teeth by eating bones and teeth. Obviously, you don't really eat teeth, especially like chicken, like they don't have, they don't have teeth. But, but as I was saying, bones and teeth, they're basically the same thing, just in different areas of the body. So if you're using a bone broth, you're going to be getting very high levels of the good types, the bioavailable types of the calcium and magnesium. So not all of these things are made, made equal. So say, for example, you take a calcium supplement for your bone health. You might be taking like calcium carbonate, for example, or some other type of inactive, unbioavailable form. This is basically like rock. Like, this is basically like eating chalk. So you can go to a quarry and you can dig out a rock of calcium carbonate or some other kind of calcium mineral and eat it and it doesn't actually help you have stronger bones because it's completely useless to your body. You, what you need is an actual bioavailable form of this calcium. And many of the, the, the plant food sources of calcium, they're not very high in a bioavailable form of calcium because they're bound with things like oxalates or other types of minerals that that, that make it not very bioavailable, but you can't really do anything with it. So instead, if you're using it from an animal food source, so you can see the theme here, it's like animal foods, animal foods, and animal foods. Look, that's the common theme here, it's because this is this is really important for your, for your teeth and your bones. You need these things, and the best way to get them in a bioavailable way is from animal foods. So doing a bone broth is gonna cover these bases. If you wanna take a magnesium supplement, you can get pretty good um, pretty good magnesium supplements. I like to use one that's like a lot of different types of magnesium. So I like to use one that's got like six or seven or eight different forms of magnesium because your body uses them in different ways for different functions and they're gonna work differently based on your metabolism. But if you've got a little bit of everything, it's gonna help your body in some way. And then mineral balance is also really important. So things like micronutrients, so like the, like the micro minerals, like the molybdenum and, and things like that, the really tiny trace minerals. These are also really important. So I'd say the easiest way you can make sure you get some of these is just make sure you're using a good quality salt. So don't use like sodium chloride refined, like that kind of, so that table salt isn't even supposed to be eat, eaten. You're not supposed to eat it. It's supposed to be used in like manufacturing and industrial processes. The type of salt we're supposed to eat is like the, the sea salt is probably your best option. But you could also look at like Himalayan pink salt or something like that, you know, eat real salt and you'll have trace minerals in it. It's probably the best and easiest way to get it. And try to eat food from nutrient rich soils. So if you can get food that is organic or biodynamic, or if you're eating like animal products, like if you're doing a bone broth from a grass fed cow, it's going to be way, way more saturated in micronutrients. And we've got one bonus point here as well, which is the microbiome. So this isn't the most important thing here, but it is still important because the microbiome that you have in your gut determines the microbiome that you have on your skin, all around all of your different organs, in your eyes, in your mouth, everywhere. So there's not a single sterile place on your body. You have microbes every, every single inch of your body, especially in your mouth. So if you have an imbalance of microflora in, in your gut, 
it, you're basically guaranteed to have an imbalance of microflora in your mouth as well. So making sure that we, we balance your microbiome and make sure that you have the right types of probiotics in your mouth is really important. The best way you can really do this is instead of taking a capsule of, of probiotic, just open the capsule and sprinkle it in your mouth or take a loose powder instead. This way you're making sure you get these microbes in your mouth. And don't worry about your stomach acid killing them. It doesn't really do that, especially if you take them first thing in the morning with a glass of water. Both your valves and your stomach are open, the probiotics will go straight through, you'll have no problems. So don't worry about that. Those, uh, those gastro release caps, they're just really good marketing, so don't, you don't have to buy into that. So some final points, things to avoid. So here we've got amalgams. So amalgams are like mercury, um, mercury amalgamations of, of different types of metals, but they have mercury in, very toxic, connected to lots of different autoimmune problems, especially things like MS. I know of people that have absolutely gone through a health roller coaster just because of poor dental work and having a mouth. So just don't do that. Just save yourself all that hassle. Just don't do it. Don't use fluoride. Fluoride is just it's just not really good for your teeth. There's some studies about increasing like the density of the teeth. Maybe it does that, but it doesn't make them stronger. It actually makes them brittle. Remember what we were talking about earlier with the teeth having that, the bones having that flexibility with the collagen matrix. Fluoride stops that happening, so they just become rigid. So you might be able to increase your bone density, but you're not actually making your teeth any healthier. You're just making them weak in a different way. So don't do that. Vegetable oils are generally quite inflammatory. The reason that I'm putting vegetable oils here isn't so much because the vegetable oils themselves are bad, but because if you're eating vegetable oils, you're probably not eating the animal food based oils, like the butter, the ghee, the egg yolks, which is where all of these fat soluble vitamins are contained. So if you're eating more of the vegetable oils, you're eating less of these, and that's that's the problem. It's, it's not so much the vegetable oils, but it's that you're not eating enough of these. And these need to be like a daily staple, you know? Like you need to be having like pate on top. Like one of my favorite breakfasts is like sourdough bread covered in, in butter with sourdough, with a, so sourdough toast with a pate on top. Super easy, you get all your fat soluble vitamins, it just sets you up in a good place for the day. Um, down here we've got re reduced excess sugar. So again, it's one of these things like, it's not really the sugar that's the problem. Like if you're eating according to your appetite and you're not eating too much refined sugar and you're just eating what your body's asking you to eat, it's not so much the sugar that's the problem, it's more so that it can deplete magnesium if you're not eating sugar from a whole food form. So if you're eating sugar like in a fruit, it has the right amount of magnesium that your body needs to metabolize it. But if you're eating refined sugar, you can deplete your body of magnesium, which is what causes the problem in the teeth. It's not actually the sugar in your mouth that's causing the problem, it's that the sugar is messing the, meta the metabolic processes up, causing a mineral imbalance in your body, and that manifests as a teeth problem. So it's not even that the sugar is really bad, it's that it's depleting your magnesium. So if you eat excess sugar, just make sure that you're taking a magnesium supplement or you're replenishing magnesium to your body in some way, and you'll probably be fine. You know, I probably borderline an unhealthy amount of sugar and my teeth are still doing great because it's not about sugar being bad, it's about making sure that you have the, res the mineral resources to be able to compensate any like de depleted nutrients that you might have. So make sure that you're providing your body with the, with the stuff that it needs. So uh, that's, that's everything here. I'm just gonna give you my sort of a, a day of my dental hygiene and, and how this kind of looks. So my day is basically just laced with Fat soluble vitamins in the whole day. So, as I was just, just giving you the example, pate for breakfast. I'm, I have butter with all of my food. Get margarine and just throw it out your window. Just get rid of it. Margarine is just shit. Don't eat that. Replace it with some good quality grass fed butter. If you're a bit dairy intolerant, you could try ghee instead. Most people that are intolerant to, to dairy actually do fine with ghee because it's usually the it's usually the non fat soluble components that they have an allergic reaction to. So, just try ghee. It's a much better option. It tastes awesome. It's really nice. Um, personally, I, I don't brush my teeth every single day. I really don't think it's necessary. I feel like I have pretty good teeth. If I know I have particularly bad breath, then I'll do it. I also don't use toothpaste. I just I just don't find it necessary. I, I think it's just a, quite a marketing kind of thing. I feel like it, it's really unnecessary. So I use the Aquapig whenever, I basically use this at least once a day before I go to bed so I can make sure that my teeth don't have stuff like stuck in them. I just had my wisdom teeth removed, so that's a bit harder because you can't really use that kind of when you've done that. So this is a bit of a challenge for me at the minute, but use an pick is awesome. Brush your teeth when you feel like you need to brush your teeth. You know, you get a feeling when your mouth feels kind of gross and you're like, okay, I should probably wash them. Wash them. So be hygienic, hygienic. If you notice that you don't feel good, do something about it. But I don't feel like the once in the morning, once at night is actually necessary if you're taking care of the nutrition side. So 
fill your day with this. Have some kind of bone broth, some have some kind of meat stock or something at least once a day. You know, just put it in there in your diet in some way. Have a cup of stock with my with my breakfast. I had a cup of stock today. You can make soup and you can use this as a base. So just load up on this side of stuff. And I mean, I'm not saying don't do this. You know, if you want to brush and if you really like brushing and flossing your teeth and you like spending like 20 minutes in the bathroom every morning, every night, well, then do that. But I personally do not believe that that is necessary to have good dental health. I think this is this is actually substantially less important than, than this. So prioritize doing this. And I mean, lots of people don't brush their teeth like that, so religiously anyway, because we kind of have a feeling that that's not that's not the right way to do it. That's not actually necessary, and I really don't believe it is. So if you are going to use a toothpaste, make sure it doesn't have fluoride in. You can get some pretty good toothpaste. Again, I just I just don't because I just don't feel like it's necessary. So I just basically brush with water. Um, if you like to use uh, like mouthwash and but you don't want to have the fluoride and stuff in it, a really good alternative that I've been really liking is just make some salt water and just do it with that. It helps your gums heal. It, it's amazing. It's, it's such a you get like passive minerals coming in through your gums. You just basically mix a bit of salt in some water. You can leave like a liter in the bathroom, so you can just but right now, as I said, I have my wisdom teeth out. I'm just sipping some back at the end of every meal, rinsing it around, getting all of the stuff out, and it works amazing. It's so much better than mouthwash, and it's so cheap, and it's so healthy, and it's awesome. So just rinse your teeth out, get, get an aqua pick. If you've thought about it, just buy it. If you've never even heard of it, go do some research. They're so cool. They're awesome. If you get it, it's got different attachments. Your whole family can use it. It's such a good investment. Just get an apple pick. And if you do need to go to a dentist, make sure you find a good one. Make sure you work with a buyer or an integrative de dentist. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust my teeth with mainstream dentistry because I work with people frequently that have had their health absolutely ruined by working with, I would say, an in, in, in improper understanding of, of the mouth and dentistry and, and how to do it properly. So. I know it might be a bit expensive, and that was one of the concerns I had, but it's so much, it's worth it, you know, that peace of mind that you know that you're working with somebody that isn't going to fuck up the rest of your life, it's quite, quite relieving. So, I know it's more expensive, just pay it, it's worth it, it really is. It's one of those things, just don't mess with that, it's like, just get a good dentist. So, I've got so much more I could talk about today, but I want to kind of wrap it up, so I can talk all about like mercury and mercury fillings, I can talk more about cavitations, I can talk more about so many different things. So if you're interested in this topic and you'd like me to do more on this, make sure you let me know you found it interesting and leave me a question so I can cover them in the next video. But I think that should be everything for today. So now I'm just going to check to see if we have any questions. So we may not, and if we don't, we will be finishing up. So if you do have any questions, make sure you let me know. So Kian says, I love teeth. Hi Kian, I love teeth too. All of my molars have cavities from childhood. I got my mercury fillings replaced with composites a few years back and used Nano, oh, this is a good word. Nano hydro. You have to read that. I don't know. I don't know how to say that. Nano hydro, xapiate, and black walnut to support remineralization. That's a really cool word. Yes, to animal-based vitamin A and K2. You rock, William. Thank you so much, Kian. I really, really appreciate that. It's really cool to hear that you've been remineralizing your teeth. I'd be really interested to hear if you've actually managed to achieve remineralization. This is something that I looked at a lot online. And I wasn't able to find any literature anywhere about teeth remineralization being possible. But if you can tell me as an anecdote that you've seen this happen, I will absolutely take that on board. So if that has happened for you, please do let me know because I would be extremely fascinated to hear that. I truly believe the body can regenerate, but I don't, I don't know about enamel. It's one of those substances that I'm just not sure of. So let me know if you've, if you've, been, able to, if you've been able to do that. That would be really fascinating for me to hear. So that's everything for me today. If you do have any questions, please let me know. If you need any help, send me a DM. I'm always happy to help. And I'll talk to you soon. Ciao. Lovely to have you. Now I've got to figure out how to finish. Ciao.